this is a tale of old Russia in Christian times. There was once a young man from Archangel named Ivan Savelevich. A hunter of seals is how he made his living. Every winter, every hunting season, he spent on the bleak island of Novaya Zemya. It was a lonely existence, for Ivan hunted alone, gathering his catch each season to sell in Archangel. Surrounded by ice and snow, alone in his hut, at night he would sometimes while away the hours playing his balalaika by the light of a dim lamp and the glow of the northern lights. One night, after his lamp had gradually gone out, Ivan continued to play a sad song in the dark. Suddenly he heard a strange rustling, as if someone was dancing to the music. Muttering a prayer, he relit the lamp to find himself alone. He put the lamp out again and continued playing, and yet heard the rustling again. But whenever he lit the lamp, he still was alone. The same thing happened several times, until one night he lit the lamp and hid it behind a curtain so that the hut remained dark. When he heard the sound of the rustling again, he pulled the curtain aside and saw before him a young girl. She was beautiful, but pale as the snow and ice outside, with hair so long it touched the floor of the hut. Who are you? he asked in amazement. I am a Rusalka, she answered. My father was a man such as you, and because of him I am able to live on land as long as I am with only one person. My true home was a stream near the town of Nizhny Novhorod. She then told Ivan, I love you, and I cannot live without you. Ivan nearly made the sign of the cross to send her away, for Rusalki were dangerous creatures water spirits who were said to lure young men to their deaths or to be enslaved beneath the waters. But he was so taken by the beauty of the Rusalka that he could not finish making the sign of the cross. He didn't have the heart to raise his hand. Ivan and the Rusalka spent the entire winter season together very happily. The little hut was always neat and tidy, and everything they needed appeared as if by magic. The long nights were no longer dull, for they had music and dancing. But at last, with the coming of spring, Ivan knew he would have to return to Archangel. The Rusalka could not live in the town, so she wept, clinging to Ivan, begging him not to leave her. Let us jump into the water together, she suggested, and live there. If only you knew how wonderful it was under the water. But Ivan was afraid and said he must return to Archangel to sell his catch. Although the Rusalka was broken-hearted, she told Ivan how he might find her if he ever changed his mind. Just outside Nizhny Novhorod, there is a little stream flowing through the forest. At the point where it runs into the Volga, there is a deep pool with a tall tree standing over it. If you climb into the tree at the exact stroke of midday or midnight and plunge into the pool without first making the sign of the cross, you will find me waiting for you. As time passed, Ivan began to pine for the Rusalka and one day he set off from Archangel and walked the nearly 2,000 versts to Nizhny Novhorod. Now this wasn't Veliki Novhorod, but another great city, even further away. He found the spot the Rusalka had described and climbed the tree. As Ivan Savelevich gazed into the water, he thought he could see the familiar beckoning shape of the Rusalka, his Rusalka but could not be sure if that was her long hair floating on the surface or only strands of waterweed. Was that her little hand waving to him or a fish jumping? 
for a long time. Yvonne hesitated. He feared drowning. He also remembered the stories of the Rusalki. But exactly at midday, he plunged into the water, remembering not to make the sign of the cross. With a great splash, the waters opened and then closed around him. The ripples subsided and the stream flowed on as before. But what of Ivan? Down and down he swam, deeper and deeper and deeper still he swam until at last he landed on the river bed. Looking up, he saw the river above him like a high vaulted roof with the sun's rays shining through. Little waves and eddies splashed and bubbled over the gleaming sand, and through the reeds he glimpsed the beautiful faces of Rusalki peering at him. Some of the water nymphs were dancing and singing. Suddenly the dancers parted, and the Rusalka, who had been his companion, swam to embrace him. Ivan never knew how long he spent under the water, but one day, homesick for dry land, he made the sign of the cross. When Ivan opened his eyes, he found himself by the town of Nizhny Novhorod. It was at the feast I heard this tale, there it was I drank mead ale. Though it flowed down my beard, my mouth stayed dry, for never a drop passed my lips where I.